Hi, today we're going to have a look at some solder tip cleaners and for as long as I've been soldering I have primarily used just a damp sponge to clean up the tip of the soldering iron. However I have noticed with certain tips or with some of the larger ones you can't always get the tip completely clean prior to doing a solder joint and that's where the brass wool comes in quite handy to try and clean up that tip a little bit more. But what I have noticed is when you're soldering what happens is um, you vaporize some of the flux and that's basically what the smoke is that's coming off when you're doing a solder joint and that has the tendency to start attacking the tips on your soldering iron so you can see um, this tip here I only used for that one video uh, a couple of weeks back and this one is looking quite heavily attacked and I did not clean this one up on a sponge whatsoever and I think what's previously happened is where you're wiping uh, the tip on the sponge you're actually wiping away any flux residues on here whereas the brass wool doesn't have that effect so I certainly think there's a place for both of these uh, but the video today is not really about these two items it's more about these motorized tip cleaners because this one caught my eye recently I saw a thread on the EV blog forum quite a while back about motorized tip cleaners and then this one happened to appear on eBay um, and I managed to get this one brand new for about £15 delivered. Now the typical price for this tip cleaner is £42. Let's have a quick look at what this actually is. So first of all this is the Yahua 200C and on Banggood this is retailing for about £42. And what this is is a motorised tip cleaner. So basically you poke your soldering iron tip into the hole here. It detects that the tip is in there and then inside if we have a look a bit further down there's some brushes which basically flick all the solder off the soldering iron and then supposedly into a little collection tray that's inside the device and it comes with a few different types of bristles so you get some brass ones and then you get these plastic ones. And a quick word from my video sponsor JLC PCB. don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some PCBs made and if you're thinking about using the SMT assembly service the process is a little bit more streamlined now and even more components are available so that should mean even more of your projects can be manufactured using their service. So don't forget to visit them. Now I thought this looked like a nice little time saving device just to speed up soldering and make things a little bit easier. Obviously there's nothing wrong with the manual methods. It's just another little gadget to have on your bench. However, it did get me wondering because the build quality on this is not the greatest. Um, so I had a little look to see what else was on the market. And I noticed that Metcal make a more expensive unit and JBC make an even more horrifically priced unit. I think one of the um, tip cleaners there is about £350. Uh, the Metcal that we've got here, I managed to get for £200 from Farnell, which is still a lot of money for a tip cleaner. But I thought it'd be interesting to get it for this video so you can see the difference between a much cheaper device and something that's been engineered to be a bit more premium. So the general operating principle is fairly straightforward. Um, so you're about to make a solder joint to simulate a bit of solder already on the tip and basically you then go and poke it in here. The motors start up and basically wipe off all of the excess solder off the tip. Now as you can see this one doesn't do an absolutely perfect job. There is still some solder on there and I have found that with this one you do need to give it a little bit of an extra wipe to get that really nice shiny surface ready for soldering. So let's take a look inside the unit. It's magnetically held closed but you can see you can open that up to clean it out and the idea is that this dish is supposed to collect all of the bits of solder but as you can see it's not completely effective. It's gone all over the insides here and up here at the back as well so I could possibly see at some point in the future it might be that it gets onto bits of the electronics that might be exposed. Now there's a little bit of metal down here and the magnet here so that's what keeps it closed under normal circumstances and then as you can see inside it's fairly basic in design. Uh, we've got two uh, brass brushes. Um, it did come with some plastic ones. Um, I didn't notice when I first used it. I don't know what they're for because I poked the soldering iron in and I just ended up with a load of um, melted plastic on my soldering iron tip so um, I don't know if, they, if that's for some other purpose uh, but I put the brass ones in and it seems to do a fairly good job. However, what I've noticed is this one is quite gentle. There's quite a bit of separation there, which you can just about see, between the two brass brushes. So that's partly the reason why it doesn't completely get all of that solder off the soldering iron. You can see here we've got a little infrared sensor. That's what detects your soldering iron and then turns on the motor. And then we've got this assembly here just with a little belt going between all of the wheels. 
to actually spin the brushes when it's driven by this motor. So the electronic module just simply unplugs. We've got the 12 volt supply coming in. In blue, we've got the LED. And then on this side, we've got the photo transistor. And then we've got another connection off just to a plain 12 volt DC motor. And inside the little unit, we've got the PCB. And there really is nothing to it. Let's have a closer look. So we've got the 12 volt coming in. And basically all this is doing is powering that infrared LED continuously. And then when there is a signal received by that photo transistor, say it's blocked, it turns on the transistor and provides power to the motor. So there's no timer or anything like that on here. If that light gate for whatever reason gets blocked, this will just permanently run. And you can also see the construction is pretty poor on this. The resistors are upside down, uh, soldering pretty terrible, uh, but I guess it's functional enough anyway. And then just underneath that plate, you can see the 12 volt brushed motor, just a very simple device. There's really not a lot to this one, and that just drives the belt directly. Now this one at the bottom already looks like it's gone off kilter slightly. It's on the wonk very slightly. It needs pressing in a little bit better. But um, yeah, it's very simple and pretty low cost, as you can see. I think you could probably DIY one a little bit better than what we've got in here. Now, when it comes to the more premium tip cleaners, uh, JBC and Metcal all manufacture some of these devices. JBC have got three different ones available, but it's not immediately clear really the benefits of one over the other. First of all, this is the most expensive one that JBC make for £358, including VAT. There's some infrared LEDs and a photo detector in this little strip here. And when you're about to poke the solder and iron tip in here, it turns on the brushes and cleans the tip. And then there's another one which is a little bit cheaper, £318, including VAT, which seems to have very similar behaviour. It just doesn't have those buttons at the top. And then this one is the cheapest one, which has a mechanical switch which you engage with your soldering iron. Uh, this one is £276, including VAT, and it has a couple of brushes, again, to clean the soldering iron tip. Now, Metcal make the ACSTC. And there really isn't a lot of information about this unit either on their website or anywhere else. Uh, so I took a bit of a punt on this one. It's the most reasonable out of the lot. And I was able to get it for £200 from Farnell. Now £200 is a lot of money to spend on a tip cleaner already. So I'm hoping that this one is at least showing some significant improvements over the Chinese one that's about a quarter of the price. Now already it feels much more solid and better built. Uh, we've got a power switch at the back here. The 24 volt DC connection on the input here. We've got an ESD connection, which is for um, basically it connects to the brushes so that everything is all at the same potential. And then we've got a little trimmer here, which sets the sensitivity of the light gate that detects um, your soldier nine being inserted in here. So um, there are different ways that you can use this. So it comes with this little bar here if you prefer it to be used in a more vertical manner or with it clipped back into here it's still quite comfortable to use. It's kind of at the angle that you'd put your soldering iron into the soldering iron stand. Now this one opens up at the front and you can see I've not used this one yet. I literally have just unboxed this. Uh, so this is our little tray for collecting all the bits of solder. We've got some much more dense brass brushes and it looks like this, because they're much more closely spaced, will do a much better job of cleaning the, uh, the solder off your tip. Now, interestingly, it looks like they've used a stepper motor, um, which is a little bit surprising. I guess that allows them to run these at a lower speed that's more appropriate because that other one does tend to run quite fast and just flick the solder off. But as you saw, it went everywhere. Maybe this one is a little bit more controlled. Um, you can see the wires for the light gate in the front just here uh, and then some electronics at the bottom. And you can see that green wire that's connected onto all this metal work here. That's the one that connects to that ESD terminal at the back. So we've got a nice PCB at the bottom of the unit, a little bit more going on than on the very cheap Yahoo. So first of all, the stepper motor plugged into this little JST connector just here. And we've got a dedicated stepper motor driver, the DRV8825 from Texas Instruments. And then we've got a microcontroller at the bottom, which is driving this. So presumably that is providing the enable and also the frequency at which to step the stepper motor. So we've got a little Atmel Tiny down here running the show. And then more interestingly, uh, the 
sensor that detects your soldering iron being inserted is an inductive sensor and it's got a dedicated proximity sensor chip here the TCA505 which is dedicated for doing proximity sensing with an inductive pickup. So quite an interesting chip I've not come across this one before it's made by Siemens but basically it has one input here which is your LC input so you have your coil you have a capacitor across it to create an LC circuit and when you have something that interferes with the magnetic field that you've made with that coil, this is able to detect that change. And then we've got a couple of outputs here, an inverting and non-inverting output, which you can then use to interface with other electronics. And so I guess that trim pot that we saw at the back here is what's driving that sensitivity adjustment on that IC. Now, what I did notice, uh, first of all, Nice construction, they put some Loctite on here to stop these nuts becoming uh, loose through vibration. But uh, the input to this unit is 24 volts, and you can see the 24 volt comes through the power switch and then onto the PCB, through this diode, and then straight into an electrolytic capacitor, a 10 microfarad, 25 volt electrolytic capacitor. So that's been used right at its limit. And let's say your AC to DC converter wasn't perfectly regulated or regulated a little bit high. We're pushing this very, very close to its limit. So I'd be inclined almost to change that for a 35 volt capacitor. Also, it then feeds directly into an LM78M05 linear voltage regulator. And although some of these are rated for 30 or 35 volts, they actually recommend that the 5 volt versions are not uh, driven with an input much higher than about 18 volts. So again, pushing the limits quite hard on these two components just here. However, I don't think the quiescent power draw is very much, so I don't think this will be getting particularly hot. It's just uh, probably that electrolytic capacitor is something to worry about a little bit. Our solder collection tray seems fairly heavy duty, quite nicely constructed, so nothing to complain about there. And then we've got our brush unit. So we've got the stepper motor, and then it goes on to two plastic gears. I guess that's the only criticism really that they've used plastic as opposed to metal but we shouldn't really be seeing that much load from these two brushes so hopefully they'll outlast the unit uh, but then we've got two replaceable brushes and these ones are quite nice uh, quite close together so hopefully this will do a good job of cleaning up the solder tip. So let's give it its first test so we'll put a bit of solder on the end of the solder iron. And these brushes rotate much slower than the Yuhua, and that's done a pretty good job of cleaning that up. Let's try it again. So yeah, fairly low speed rotation. It's done a pretty good job. It still does leave a little bit on there. I guess if you rotated the tip, yeah, that gives much better coverage. So it does seem to do the job. And I guess with the inductive sensor, if you poke something else in there, yeah, it doesn't trigger it, whereas the Yuhua one would do. So if you did accidentally poke your finger in, uh, you've got a chance of causing some damage in the other device. This one will not do that. And the JBC does use a light gate, so I guess that one is also susceptible to people poking their fingers in and scraping off some skin. So quite a nice design on the Metcal here. So that's just a little look at these automatic tip cleaners. Uh, do you need one for your bench? Probably not. It is quite nice to have though. I wasn't originally convinced. However, having had this one on my bench for quite a few weeks now, it is actually very convenient and does speed up soldering. You can just poke your soldering iron in and not think about what you're doing and just carry on soldering, clean the tip and carry on. You don't have to worry about your technique for cleaning that tip. Um, so it is a little bit lazy, but it's also very convenient. Um, the Metcal is definitely a lot better built. Is it worth four times the price? Um, I don't know. Um, we'll have to see how it performs over the coming weeks. Uh, so certainly expect that this one would not last on your bench it is very cheaply built and as you saw that solder splattered absolutely everywhere and there was actually a little label on the PCB that says keep the PCB clean um, so I don't know if they're actually expecting you to make sure you clean all the debris off from around that area to prevent it failing but it was very cheaply built this one is much better uh, is the JBC worth almost twice as much I don't know um, it's probably very similar in terms of quality, and I think you're probably paying for the JPC brand in that instance. I'm surprised that the Metcal is coming in a little bit cheaper, but even at £200, this is a lot of money, especially for a hobbyist to have on their bench. So anyway, I hope you found the video useful, just in case you were looking at these devices and wondering whether they're worth it. 
Uh, certainly a time saver, but it's more of a luxury than an essential. So I hope you found the video useful, and until next time, thanks for watching.